What is good? I'm back with our main man, Austin. What's good, man? What's up, man? How you doing, Casey? Oh, I'm excited. We're, we're having a little fun. This is going to be a Friday drop for the pod and the, and the YouTubes. We're going to do a super flex tight end premium 2024 class with the 2023 class two round mock draft. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take the top guys from each of those classes. I'm going to have a pick. Uh, Austin's going to have a pick and we're going to alternate and go through 24 guys and have a little discussion along the way. Uh, I think this is this is going to be a fun one. It's not meant for any any real uh, you know trade values or anything per se in this one. Just just going to have fun combining these last two draft classes because they've really been great. You know this this was actually pretty difficult to kind of go through here and and put these guys and, and not feel like you're really leaving somebody off or, or blowing a pick here. The high end talent that is there and the depth is glaring as well, man. Like when you actually go back and look at the 23 class and even this 24 class, like the, the depth is the number one thing that stands out mm. to me. It's just like, yeah. God damn, man, there's a lot of good players. And uh, yeah, this, tw- this got- 25 class. No, I'm, I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to get some good running backs. So that's good. But we got a 24 and then we're, you're trying to cram, you know, 20 pounds of stuff into a 15 pound sack or a. We're trying to crown 20 pounds of stuff into a 15 pound sack. That's how that saying goes. All right, let's kick it off. I have the first pick. This show is brought to you by underdog. Use promo code FFD at checkout to get a little bonus there. But if you're not playing the pickums, you should really go play those pickums. It's a lot of fun, higher or lower on a bunch of different player props. You could literally any game, any, you can do it live. You can do it before the game, receiving yards, whatever you want to do, but it's a fun way. You know, you got to do at least two, but you can, you can, Put as many as you want together, six, eight, whatever. We've had a lot of fun doing it, and you should try it out too. Go deposit on Underdog. Use promo code FFD and check that out. All right. I got the first pick. Drum roll, please. I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. Wow. Okay. All right. Like Sell I said, we're gonna we're having some Jayden fun today, Daniels. but I've I've got the fever. I'm I'm excited about Jaden Daniels. And look, if if you would have, if we would have done this last year, which I don't even know if we if we may have, but right around this time, I would have gave Anthony Richardson this kind of treatment because it was just like, you know, when he did put up fantasy points, who's putting them up in bunches, and Jaden Daniels uh, is is doing it with five years of experience mm-hmm. instead of you know Anthony Richardson 13, 14 games at that point in his career, but still, what Jaden Daniels is doing right now is very impressive, and and we're not even seeing where it's a rookie doing this uh, and we knew the legs were going to be a big part of propping the fantasy value up, but the team is winning. You know, we came in here thinking Caleb's walking into such a good situation, Jaden Daniels and eh, not so much, you know, and my, how has that script flipped quite a bit and it doesn't seem like anybody's really addressing it. Uh, whereas Caleb's offensive line we thought was okay. Doesn't look good at all. And Jaden Daniels is over there, you know, putting the team on his back that, you know, they're not punting, they're, they're converting drives, they're scoring all over the place. And he is QB one right now in fantasy, uh, averaging 23.7 points per game. And and we haven't even seen, we, we've seen growth kind of week to week with them. I, I will say, you know, we're having fun. I don't know if this will be a long thing. We've seen Cliff Kingsbury come into the league with Kyler Murray and be really, and put up a lot of points. And, and that thing went South, but maybe, Maybe Cliff's learns a few things. He's come back. He got in them spreadsheets like Mike McCarthy and and learns some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's having sleepovers at Jaden Daniels' house. I, I don't know if he is, but uh, that's what Mike McCarthy <laughs> was doing at Jerry Jones' house. So, you know, this could get stale and this could go wrong, but everything you're hearing from the Jaden Daniels camp is, is how dedicated this man ha- is, how smart he is, first one in, last one out. And that, those are the kind of guys that I want. And you, you could see it on the field. He's super mature, never gets too high, never gets too low. Love all of those things, and the fantasy points are great too. So I went Jaden Daniels here. Probably, you know, going to get smashed in the comments, but um, um, ha- we're having some fun four weeks in. Jaden Daniels, pick one. Pick number two, or you, you got a comment there, uh, Austin? No, I love it, man. I feel like it's it, it's a completely rational thought. And before I was going to say, when I said sell me on Jaden Daniels, I meant more of like over the other quarterbacks, you know, the top yeah. your quarterbacks over the past year or two. Uh, but Casey, I'm going to, I'm going to actually pivot to a different position here. And this might come off as a little bit of a hot take. I, I am taking arguably the best wide receiver in football already in Malik neighbors at the mm. one Oh two. I've loved him since the day I, I <laughs> the first time I watched him at LSU, man, I, I was just infatuated with him as a prospect. And if anything, his stock has only, you know, rose 
immensely. He's just continued to produce at, at an even higher rate. I mean, he's on pace for what is it, 210 <laughs> targets right now? It's it, it would it, it's just absurd. Uh, 148 receptions. It's I believe one short of Cooper Cup's record. He would he would have more targets than Marvin Harrison did back in 2002. The numbers that he's on pace for right now are out of this world and I think I think he's going to play this week. I I'm not I, I'm not I have zero questions about his durability. I have zero questions, zero concerns about his play, about his production. There there's literally zero red flags with Malik Neighbors. I I truly feel like he is as safe of a player as possible. Right? The only thing that you could potentially point to with Malik Neighbors that's a concern is the quarterback play with Daniel Jones. But guess what, man? He's got he he's literally targeting 15 times a game. He, he yeah. targeted him 15 times last week, which was the most in the NFL, 18 times the pre, the previous week. Uh, Daniel Jones is getting the job done, man, and he's looking way better than, than people were anticipating. So good on Daniel Jones, and shout out to Malik Neighbors, man, for being the Don. Casey, you're up 103. All right, I like it. I like it. We're going 2024 heavy off the rip. A little disrespect to the 23s. you know, Off the rip. Off the rip. All right, three. I'm going to go one. the one three. I'm going to go C.J. Stroud. Maybe should have been the one-on-one, probably the safe bet. We, we've seen it now over a yep. year and coming into this year. Everything's really stable with what's going on. Will Slowick become a head coach? Probably, and we'll see how that goes. But he's surrounded by good talent. He's surrounded with a good defense. He has a good offensive line. He has good pieces all around him. So it shouldn't be going anywhere. He's just continuing to improve on the stuff uh, that he was putting down last year. Uh, He's QB 11 currently averaging 17.1 points per game. You know, the only thing you don't get with, with CJ is, is the legs. And, and, you know, that's a a great ZZ top song legs. You know, what can you do? (laughs) You got legs, you know how to use them, but Jane Daniels, that that, that's why I threw him up there because it's just the the fantasy points come in bunches. And if a rich was performing uh, up to, up to snuff right now, I think he'd be right up here as well. And I might even take him over Stroud because he because he's putting up points and budgets, but that is not the case right now. Stroud is doing his thing. One hundred three. I'm I'm going Stroud. Maybe should have been the one hundred one, but what could he do? Austin, what do you got for us at the one hundred four? No, I love it. I I like like you said, man. If anything, I I was strongly considering Stroud at the one hundred two. It probably would have been the safe choice, but I want to have fun, man. I want I want to take the player that was just electric that looked unreal in Malik Neighbors, and mm-hmm. here at the one hundred four, I almost feel like I'm getting a little bit of a value. I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Now I've I've always had these two wide receivers all all really all year long, neck and neck. Uh, I'm okay with with making the transition, putting neighbors a hair above Marv. I am 100% okay with that. And I think that probably most people listening are are definitely in the same sentiment, that, that they would agree that neighbors has, you know, quote unquote, surpassed Marv right now in Dynasty and especially redraft ranking, oh, no doubt sure. about that. But Dynasty, I think he's there too. Marv, man, coming off a, a week four where he had a 92% snap percentage, that is something that that I love to see because that is his career high already in week four. Three of his four games over 88% snap percentage, so he is out there. He is being utilized uh, on the field very frequently. Um, you know, coming off just, just two weeks ago, had 11 targets, which was a career high. Obviously, he had that big 130-yard performance in week two two touchdowns in the first quarter outscored all of the entire, just every single wide receiver he outscored in the first quarter of his Mm. second NFL game. So again, that, that really is very uh, telling of how high his, his ceiling is. And, and I am just 100% still all in very bullish on Marv. My opinion has not changed one bit. 105 Casey, who you taking? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. I'm going to go with Caleb here. Yep. Loved Caleb. Had Caleb ahead of Jaden Daniels uh, coming in. Uh, And and at this point, you, you, you can't I don't think there's any anything you can say or do to 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 you know argue that that you got to throw Jaden Daniels ahead of of where Caleb is. Caleb for me has has made strides every week. I, I watch Caleb every week. We have a little bit of an offensive line situation. They hadn't been able to get into the run game going this past week. They do get the run game going. 
they're kind of smashing it with Roshan, getting outside with Swift. And then what I thought was going to go on with Swift, but they, which is what they finally did, was checking it down to Swift. You got these four monsters out there running around with with Keenan, DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, and then you know he's finding out that Cole Komet could be his best friend, picking moving the chains here. But Swift, you know, getting the just taking the easy stuff the last few weeks from Caleb Williams is uh, what we wanted to see. And you saw Jaden Daniels do that kind of those first few games in the league. Uh, just mm-hmm. taking the easy ones, everything was in like five yards, and then we then we started expanding to the deep shots while while you gain confidence. Uh, so, Caleb Williams still staying here for me. And and look, by the end of the year, year and a half in, Caleb Williams could easily be at the top of this list. I you know wouldn't shock me at all. The talent is there. You see it in spurts and in bunches, but certainly not not putting the team on his back quite like Jaden Daniels is, and certainly not putting up the fantasy points that Jaden Daniels is. And and you know. You had to kind of know that coming in because we knew how good the legs were with Jaden Daniels, but you thought that you might, just because of the situation that Caleb was going in, you might see a little bit more fantasy points being produced from Caleb Williams. I was in no way, shape, or form being like, oh, draft Caleb Williams and redraft. No shot. Jaden Daniels was interesting shot in redraft because we know oh, what he yeah. could do with the legs, right? Yeah, 100%. So we kind of knew what this was, uh, but you know, I, I'm, I'm sticking with Caleb here at five. I'm on board with that, man. Um, I, and we're not even a month into his NFL career, right? Not even a full month. So I, I have I have no concerns. I'm not worried. Uh, this kid is this kid's only going to get better. It's inevitable. Yeah. 106, Casey. I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs here. Ooh. Now, obviously, there's another very big it's running back. Bijan? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's close, man. It's really close. I, I tell you the truth. I thought about that for a while. I've been a little disappointed in Bijan, and I I don't even think that it's him, man. I think it's more of the coaching staff. I think it's the way that he's being utilized. I think it's a lot of the formations. You know, I, I that's my opinion. That's that's, and I'll tell you what. I think that Gibbs on the opposite end is being utilized in a much better way. We saw Dan Campbell. He just came out and said, and look, like Dan Campbell's not just any any coach, man. I, I think there's a lot of coaches that like to yap and say some nonsense to the media, but Dan Campbell, Casey, what did he tell us all offseason? He said, if there's one player who's going to improve drastically, it is Jamison Williams, okay? That, shout out to you. That was a guy that you were very bullish on, so you nailed that. Dan Campbell came out. Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Dan Campbell came out yesterday and was yapping about, um, he, he said, that Jameer Gibbs continues to get better and better. And I would anticipate that he's about to take off. He's coming on this year. So uh, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, we are seeing Gibbs put up essentially 17 plus fantasy points every single week. He just came off his best week, uh, almost 20 fantasy points. Uh, he's been nothing but consistent. Uh, the snap share, again, is something that I believe inevitably will continue to go up. Like right now we're sitting around like the mid 50 range for the most part. David Montgomery looks fantastic, mm. right? Like mm. I don't even I don't even blame them for not making Jameer Gibbs a full blown you know workhorse just yet because uh, they they just they got two solid running backs. But I'm taking Jameer Gibbs, man. I'm 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 mailing it in. I feel good about it. Uh, you know, sign me up, man. 22 years old, five nine, two o two. Jameer Gibbs, one o six. Casey. Yeah, I, I think this. I think them being together is like it's not affecting Gibbs really bottom dollar at all for you, right? I think it's good for Gibbs, you know, long term uh, sustainability because we don't need Gibbs to be just getting crushed out there week. At, what, what I what I will say is that I, I don't understand this Gibbs at the goal line stuff. Monty is a battering ram. Just give it to Monty <laughs> down there, man. Uh, don't yeah. get my, my don't get my man Gibbs all crunched up down there. Let him. He needs to be in space doing his thing. Let Monty just grind that thing out. So I think those guys are a great complement to each other. Uh, and, and, you know, you thought it might be a thorn in your side, but it's really not like, like you said, 17, 17, 16, 19, what we're getting from Gibbs here is that we're, we we're on a good confident offense that is operating in year two, three of this system. And with Bijan, we have, he's in year two, but it's a completely different system with a completely different quarterback who's coming off an Achilles. So we haven't seen the Falcons offense really emerge into what we're going to be. And we, we saw a gauntlet of a schedule here to start for the Falcons, uh, you know, with uh, Philly and Kansas city. Uh, And then they had a division battle with new Orleans. I'm missing somebody. Oh, Pittsburgh in there to lead Mm -hmm. the, lead the season off. Uh, So they just went through a buzzsaw with a quarterback who's, you know, Barely back to definitely not even at 100%. That, that Achilles isn't even a year. You know, that thing happened mid-season. So 
Um, and, and to your point, that maybe they are doing some formation stuff where Kirk would be rather be under center, I think, and they're doing some more shotgun stuff. Uh, and this is a good run blocking line. I'm not scared of Bijan, but I, hey, I'm not going to argue with Gibbs. So at seven, I'm taking Bijan, and I'll just I, I'm not going to say a whole lot because I just kind of said it in between there. But that's yep. you know I feel like Bijan's going to be just fine. He's still getting a ton. I think he has 16 percent of the receiving market share on that team, which is like top three for running backs. Uh, they are getting. He had a huge pass in this game called back from a holding penalty that didn't even have anything to do with Bijan scoring a touchdown. And and you know he's excellent receiver and has been decent on the ground for the most part uh but we just haven't seen it uh quite get going on all cylinders week in week out i mean he had 16 16 13 and then he had 11 this week and he only had eight carries but you know so I, i'm i'm fine with Bijan. i'm not worried about it i'm taking Bijan at seven uh you're up at eight there austin yeah, and this feels like a value here, uh, at least to me. I'm going to take Anthony Richardson at the 108, right? Like you, you could you think of where Richardson was going a year ago, and I think in most leagues he was the 101 or uh, 102, right? Like him and what probably Bijan were were going back and forth, right? Yeah. Uh, and here we are, one year later, and and I'm getting him at the 108. Now look, Anthony Richardson, he I'm worried for. I'm not I'm not even overreacting, man. I I'm. I want to see more from him. I know how raw he is. I know that's literally the term that everybody pivots to regarding Anthony Richardson. Everybody talks sure. about you know his lack of experience, which is accurate. I'm not going to disagree mm-hmm. with that. Uh, I I watch every single game of Anthony Richardson. He has been um, unfortunately he's been knocked out of four out of eight career games. Right, a very concerning number. Like the durability is a legitimate concern that that I think there's a valid argument for. Of course, there's a ton that's appealing about Richardson, and I'll be quick, like ranking first in pace of play, man. I, I think that the efficiency is something that was always pretty glaring, right? He, Anthony Richardson, also first in air yards per attempt at 12.7, uh, third in yards per attempt at 8.5. I mean, he came out throwing a haymaker right away to Michael Pittman against Pittsburgh this week. Uh, connect on, I think it was like a 35-yard reception right out of the gate. He looked good, man. They go down, they score a touchdown, next drive, get the ball right back, march down the field. I know he goes down and gets knocked out. He had, you know, between the potential concussion and hip injury, he he got all sorts of banged up, but he came out fired, man. He looked so good against Pittsburgh's defense. Uh, they they really shut down Watt. Um, I was I was just pleasantly surprised by what Richardson had done. It's just we need to see this at a more consistent level, and we need to simply see Richardson do this for for a, again not only a longer period of time, but again just just being consistent, man. Because it's one yeah. phenomenal throw and then one air mail, and it's like we just need that consistency from Richardson. I can't stress it enough, man. So I'm taking him here at 108, Casey. Yeah, the enigma is you you have like nine completions in week one and you score 27 fantasy points from yeah. Anthony Richardson. That's why, you know, I'm just not going to quit him for a while. I'm going to give him a lot of opportunity. Like we said, at this t- to start this off, five seasons starting at a high level college program, whether it's Arizona State or LSU for Jaden Daniels and not not a whole lot of starting for Anthony Richardson. Uh, from high school to college to where we're at in the pros and he needs to be on the field and he needs to be a little more consistent but this game it's unfortunate because like you like you stated this game he was looking good uh he had five points and he had played two drives right right and then he got hurt at the end of the second drive i believe it was two drives might have been three uh, but they were going in to score again they went right on the field he threw uh, connected on a couple of nice passes they were smashing down the field with him and and jonathan taylor they, they go right in and then he gets hurt on the following drive uh, and then Flacco comes in and, and you know, what would Anthony Richardson kept that whole pace up and not made a bonehead play or two in that game? No, but if Anthony Richardson beats the Steelers and has a pretty decent game and a nice fantasy game, the narrative now at least levels out, whereas and now now he's hurt. So we add one more tick mark to the bad stuff of Anthony Richardson. So I'm OK with it. I think this is a good value. I like the 108 pick there. 109, I'm going to take Puka Nakua. Obviously hurt, but I'm staying neutral on Puka. What I saw last year was great. Uh, love McVay, love the system, love Puka. Uh, Stafford's great. And that's all really I have to say about that. So we can keep moving there at, at 109 with Puka. Yeah, love uh, love the Puka pick. I think that uh, I think he's one of the more difficult players to to 
you know, him and uh, we'll get to another receiver later, but it's just simply due to injury, right? It, and mm-hmm. recency bias, man. It's not even me or you. It's more of consensus overreacting to recency bias. Mm-hmm. 110, this is tight end premium, man. Here comes the first tight end off the board. I'm going to take Brock Bowers. Now, Bowers has looked maybe even better than the, the prospect that he was. I know he's coming off his first quote-unquote dud week but uh the first three weeks brock bowers lights out he was just point one points away from being the tight end one for for a few weeks just behind isaiah likely then he was just trailing dallas goddard look i think i think when it's all said and done man brock bowers after this season uh, he's probably right now already in the conversation but after this season really a lot of people will look at him as the dynasty tight end one I, I think that he's just simply a, a man. And and look, with all these rumors right now, if Devontae leaves, oh, you better believe mm. his, his target share is only going to go up even more. So, Casey, yeah. you're you're up 111. I like it. First time off the board, 111. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna take the one in America, I guess, isn't going to like this. I thought, you know, this coming into this week, this wouldn't be such a hot take, but all I heard was a lot of negative Rashi Rice talk. I'm taking Rashi Rice here at 11. I know mm-hmm. he's hurt. And this is the world's longest. We don't know what the injury is ever in the history of the 21st century. It's as if there's a, a, a you know, we have to do this by pigeon or something. <laughs> uh, pigeon, why, yeah. why we don't have any information on on Rashi Rice. How complicated could this be? Apparently very. Uh, but man, I just, I love everything that I've seen from Rashi Rice from start to where we're at right now. Yes, we have an injury. And yes, there is some sort of a suspension at some point. We don't know how long or what or when it's coming. So, yes, this might be a little bit of a bummer for a minute, but all I know is that any team that had Rashi Rice on it this year got a wide receiver one. And if not the wide receiver one one, like the first wide receiver each week, he was a top 12 wide receiver every week. And he was from like week eight on last year. He was fantastic. And he just came in this year with a great role was a huge part of that chief's offense. And I just moving forward, I don't see anything changing. I don't see any reason to change. Kelsey's on the back half of the career. He's basically doing what Travis Kelsey used to do. I feel like in that offense keeps the chains moving, gets an explosive play here or there. He's really hard to deal with. They scheme him really well. I have no fear of him losing his role at any point. I mean, you know, the chiefs are dying for a receiver and they found it in Rashi Rice in the second round last year. And I feel like anybody who is still negatively going with the he's a gimmicky kind of receiver and manufactured this and manufactured that, like, I just I just don't care. Like, all I saw was fantasy points being put up. And that's the game that we're playing is the fantasy points. And there's probably a good buy low opportunity here for Rashi Rice, since there is a lot of people that seem to be negatively down on it, which is good, especially if it's, you know, people who talk into a microphone and and help influence markets on people. I'm going the complete other way. I have the market very strong on Rashi Rice. I love Rashi Rice. He was a huge part of anybody who just lost Rashi Rice, who owns him on their fantasy team. Your team just took a shot across the bow. That's Mm -hmm. a difficult one to swallow because it's really hard to replace what Rashi Rice was giving you and probably going to give you for most of the season. I don't see any reason, you know, would it have been kept up to been wide receiver one or two every week? Maybe not, but I just, you just lost the top 12 receiver. So that's a bummer. But Rashi Rice here, giving him, giving, giving him some love. Um, and yes, he's injured, but Puka's injured too. And, and I got him up there. So let's go. I almost, I know I went Bowers right there at the 110, but man, I was, I was going back and forth with, with, with uh, Rashi Rice as well. I just felt like, you know, he's, man, he, he was on pace for realistically a top five, probably closer to a top three wide receiver season this year yeah. for fantasy purposes. Like Rashi was on a mission. So uh, I, I love that. Yeah, um, give me the guy time to pat, baby. Let's go. Yeah. I'm, All right, I'm who bad. you got next? Not a bad guy. 112. To, I do. Uh, 112, I'm up. Casey, I am walking away with Roma Dunze here, Ooh. man. So it's funny. Like, first few weeks, people were, you know, pat. there were a lot of people that were panicking regarding him. Um, He comes back, fat, fat game, 112 yards, touchdown, 11 targets, man. I mean, Roma Dunze showed people real quick that he was – He's a damn good wide receiver. And it's so crazy to me that he can move the way that he can and run routes the way that he can at 6'3", 215. Like, he's not like a Tank Dell type of figure, type of wide <laughs> yeah. receiver. And he's still moving that way. And I'm just like, damn, every time I watch him, he's I, I think he's 
I think he's looked really good this season, man. I know the numbers have not been quite there in three out of the four games. Who the hell cares, man? We are we are four games into his NFL career. We've already seen the big game, the flashes. We saw the collegiate production for three years. I I, I just I love Roe, man. I really do. I think he's going to go on to just have immense success in the NFL. I, I think he has such a bright future. That's an understatement. Preach, baby. Preach. We, I mean, I just anybody who expected Rome to come in here and do what Malik Neighbors was doing, you're sadly <laughs> mistaken. You just didn't like. Yeah, you, you came in with Keenan Allen and 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 DJ Moore there, and you know Cole Komet, who was great last year and is a good tight end and can help them do a lot of things and move the chains and and score touchdowns. And Caleb's figuring that out. So there are a lot of mouths to f- mouths to feed right now. DJ Moore looks uninterested, and Keenan Allen's not long. Mm-hmm. To be there, so the reason I like this is that you do get CJ Str- or uh, uh, Caleb Williams and Rome to grow together for a long period of time, and like you said, you got a flash of it. He's not even he- 100% healthy. He's had an, he had an MCL sprain early on in, in the season yeah. there, so I'm not worried about Rome. Value stays neutral. Yes, you have to give neighbors the bump up because he's producing right now, uh, but I still see them very much as as same talent level or caliber player they're just in completely different situations right so we sometimes you got to be a little patient if there is anybody who's down on rome buy him up uh rome's going to be just fine going to be a little bit of patience here so um all right i'm going to go into the second round we're going to try to speed these up a little bit here through the back half of the second round so two one i'm going Jaden reed here was not high on Jaden reed coming into this season frankly was just scared of him because of how many mouths there were to feed on this offense. We love to look at all the analytics and we know that first downs per route run and target share and uh, first read targets and air market air yards and all these things all are great pieces of the puzzle and indicators of things. I don't need any of that shit. I can watch the game and tell you that Jaden Reed is a dog and Jaden Reed, the Packers are going to find ways to get the ball in his hands. I don't care who else is on that team. He's the guy they're going to scheme touches to, and he's their explosive playmaker, and he's so much fun to watch. And I, I've moved him ahead of every other wide receiver in the in the 2023 class, not named Puka Nakua because and Rashi Rice apparently, but he, he is excellent. And I don't, you know, he might only have three touches in some games, but on all three of those touches, he has a chance to score a touchdown. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna I'll live and die with a little up and down, but I, I want the guy who's tied to the floor in there with Jordan Love. And the guy who they're going to kind of manufacture different ways to get the ball in his hands and scheme him targets, Jaden Reed, biggest probably one of the biggest risers all this year for me. I got to I got to say one thing about Jaden Reed before Give we move on. He's played two games with Jordan Love this season. Do you know where he's finished in fantasy in the two games? I'm going to say wide he's, receiver two. He's been the wide receiver one and the wide receiver two in both of those games. I just insane ceiling, right? Insane ceiling. Now Christian Watson banged up, man. I wouldn't be surprised if his target share went even higher, but you know who's the biggest winner there? It's probably Dontavian Wicks. Regardless, Jane Reed, clear wide receiver one there. Dude is a stud. Casey, love that pick. I'm up at the 202. I'm walking away with Brian Thomas Jr. here. God, I love BTJ, man. He, look, look, Casey. If you're watching the games, man, I I went back. I watched all nine targets from the Jaguars versus the uh, Houston Texans game this Mm -hmm. past week. Every single target, he is wide open. man. And In the NFL, it does not take much separation at all to to be considered open. He was wide open on on quite literally all nine targets, man. I just want to point out like. Trevor missed BTJ on a fat deep ball on the left side of the field would have been a long touchdown. BTJ is on pace for 1170 yards, a really big season. And there is still so much meat left on the bone. That being Trevor Lawrence missing a ton of passes and Trevor's got to be better, man. But BTJ is still producing at such a high level, man. I mean, he ranks third in route win rate already through four games as a rookie. I just want to be very clear. BTJ Really, really good wide receiver. Yeah, certainly riser right now for the way he's playing. The Jaguars are just a dumpster fire on every side. No, you know, there's blame to go around for everyone. Trevor's got to be better. The receivers need to be better. The receivers need to catch balls instead of letting them when they are mm-hmm. there. Don't let them bounce off your chest. Don't let them bounce off your face. But he is missing shots. The, you know, everything about the, the, they got a lame duck coach. Every everything about the Jaguars stinks right now. And the difference between what Malik Neighbors is doing and what 
Brian Thomas is doing is there's a bunch of good talent over there and Jack, good, at least pass catchers wise. And we're missing Evan Ingram right now. Uh, so unfortunately, you're not going to see quite the target share that you're seeing with like a guy like Malik Neighbors. But if Brian Thomas was the sole guy on a trash team with somebody just chucking it up to him, you could be seeing Brian Thomas be putting up some huge numbers. Unfortunately, Christian Kirk has come alive. Evan Ingram will be back. Gabe Davis gets targets a game, you know, so there's more mouths to feed over there. But, uh, uh, you know, I just Brian Thomas deserves all the flowers and all the love right now. So uh, let's keep it moving Two, three. I'm going Kincaid. You know, not really too worried that the tight ends in general have gotten off to a slow start. I think it's it, it'll happen from time to time. I think as we move through the season, Kincaid will be just fine. Uh, you're getting him for a really good value right now. If he was catching, you know, five, six balls a game at, with tight end premium, he'd be up in the first round right now. Uh, we're probably a little depressed on the on the tight end market. Everyone's probably a little down because they're not producing. You know, this is Dynasty. It's a long term game. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're having a little fun and it does, the, you know, the market does get a tree to like redraft a little bit in season week to week. Um, and we just haven't seen any of those big games that you thought that Kincaid would easily be leading this team in receptions. And they just seem to be spreading around. Shout out to Khalil Shakir playing really well. I think the Bills will continue to build moving forward and get Kincaid more and more involved. So I'm not too worried. Kincaid's the pick here for me. Who you got at two four, Austin? Yep. I'm on the clock. Two oh four. I'm taking Sam Laporta, man. And Ooh, I don't tight end think. Run. To tell you the truth, like I don't think he should have fallen this far. He just he was widely considered the dynasty tight end one just a few months, maybe a month ago. Obviously, coming off four disappointing games, uh, but I, I again, Casey, you, you nailed it. You you talked about the tight end landscape being wildly disappointing this year. I think that's really the best way to to describe it. And you know, Laporta hasn't been like quite that bad. He's just been bad relative to where his ADP was, mm. right? Like he's still oh, yeah. fifth in yards after catch. He's been a tight end one in 50% of his games this year, a tight end, uh, a top 12 tight end. That is like, there's a lot of underlying metrics that are still very appealing about Sam Laporta. It's just, I mean, come on, man. Like did, did you necessarily think he was going to live up to like the tight end one overall uh, hype for, for this season? I did. And I kind of I kind of felt like he was someone that I loved in Dynasty and I still do. But I, I wanted to fade him a little bit in redraft. I just I felt again, I just felt like his ADP was too rich. Uh, but I a kids just 23 years old and uh, yeah, a very bright future for Sam Laporta. I, I have zero concerns moving forward. I think he's just going to continue to be uh, just better and better. Right. Like he's coming off a, a 9.3 fantasy point performance. I know it's not great. It was his best on the season. Uh, yeah, also, he started the, the year banged up too. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. I didn't even mention that. And he also just finished with the highest snap percentage that he's had this season at 89%. So uh, we're going to see him continue to ramp up. His usage will go up, as will his production. Casey, you're up 205. I'm going to take a chan here. Just feel like it's good value. Obviously, again, I think if Miami would be doing what they did for the first game or two with Tua, uh, I, even then, I thought the offense was kind of struggling to where we expect Miami to be. Uh, and then, of course, two goes out with the concussion and a lot of things up in the air right now. But A-Chan was was really good in those contests when, when they were stretching the field and able to kind of run at least somewhat of the offense that you expect from them. So I, I just thought this was a really good value here. A-Chan could easily be up in the first round with some of these guys with the amount of points that he can score in bunches. A-Chan, 205. I felt like that was a layup pick. Yeah, I mean he's been uh he's been boomer bust so far, you know, two phenomenal weeks, two weeks outside of RB RB 33 or worse and uh, to tell you the truth man, I I pinpointed all on Tua, right? Like a healthy Tua just yeah, 23 and 29 I, I, the first two games, yeah. 8 and 9, 8 and 5 the last <laughs> two games, you know. Yeah, it's it's all Tua, man. I think if anything Tua deserves more credit. I think uh he he just makes that entire offense significantly more valuable whether it's Waddle, whether it's Tyreek, whether it's HN, mm -hmm. it's it's just they need Tua back, man. I think uh I I just I uh, yeah, they, I really think it's that simple, man. I I I just I want to point out that uh you know, Tua literally led the NFL in passing yards last year. He was practically leading prior to getting hurt this year as well. So, I mean, there, there, it, there's no question that he provides so much value for that offense. Casey, I'm up here at 206, correct? The 206? Yes. I'm, I'm going to walk away with Zay Flowers here. I think Zay is a player who I've gotten significantly more bullish on really over the calendar year. 
we saw Lamar hose him week one, man. I know it's kind of fallen off a little bit in some ways after that. Like, like, uh, I, sorry, I shouldn't even say that. It was the first two weeks, right? 10 mm-hmm. targets, then 11 targets. I know the past two weeks have been rather frustrating, but Baltimore has been a very unique team this year. I think game script has played a vital yes. role, obviously, with you know the emergence and the addition of Derrick Henry. We saw him kind of flip-flop. In fact, you know, slower start. Now the dude is literally on pace for over 2,000 rushing yards. That's not a joke. Like You go do the math. Um, but Derrick Henry obviously has picked up over the past two weeks north of 150 rushing yards back-to-back games. Um, but back to Zay Flowers, man, just 24 years old. I, I really think he's going to go on to be a PPR machine. I think uh, he's candidly the wide receiver one on that offense. Uh, you know, and, and especially with Mark Andrews disappointing and Isaiah likely now uh, being rather disappointing after the, you know his his big week one. So uh, I'm I'm very, very much in on Zay Flowers. I think he's going to just simply continue to be the wide receiver one there and continue to command a, a pretty strong target share moving forward for the Baltimore Ravens. I love it. You know, I'm a flowers guy. But yeah, like you said, the game script had a lot to do with it. I think if, if it would have kept up, the you know, they were offensive line wasn't good couldn't run the ball through the first two games and then they've just been a running powerhouse the last two and there's nothing (laughs) you can do about it so uh you know flowers is going to suffer in some of those games but uh he showed you what you can do when when they're going to be in a a game script where they have to stay competitive and and pass the ball around Uh, i think he's got room to fly up this list uh if we can keep a little bit more consistency but that's what you're going to get with with lamar and and henry when they're on they're going to be running it down your throats and, and putting up points and, and then their defense is going to continue to gel after losing the defensive coordinator one of the better ones in the league right now to the seahawks for the head coach so 207 i'm gonna take drake may i know you know not playing right now and and maybe that's a maybe it's too high for some people's likings uh but i i like drake may big fan of drake may he's got some rushing upside we saw some of it in the preseason we saw the you know some of the decision making and and pocket awareness and all that stuff kind of playing well in the preseason there i think as soon as the patriots uh fix this offensive line they get a little healthier right now they're missing a ton of stuff up there and jacoby Brissett is just consistently peeling himself off the ground and duct taking his body parts back together so i don't want drake may in there in that madness but as soon as we can see that there's some a little bit of continuity maybe back on that offensive line which we thought it was going to be not great but it's way worse than we thought and mostly due to injury uh, but if we can get that O line back, I think they're they're I think they're ready to see May at this point. They've they know where they're getting by week six, seven. I don't know when this line can get healthy. We're gonna start to see May, and I think he'll he'll start getting people excited for for what he could do. Now they're not good, you know, so you got to temper your expectations. But you know, Jalen Polk is is producing metrics wise. Everyone's you know he, he's doing very well uh, in a bunch of those predictive uh kind of analytical things that that point to hey if we can get this guy the ball he could be really having some good success maybe a little buy a little opportunity for Jalen Polk before May gets in there but the ball will be coming out quicker they'll be moving the chains I think a little bit more uh with Drake May and he's going to make some mistakes but I got Drake May here not forgetting about my man at 2-7 so at 208 who you got Austin I'm taking Jackson Smith and Jigba here. Now it's so funny, Casey. He was going off the board as you know the first wide receiver candidly back in 2023. I get him here at the end of the second round, towards the end of the second round, the 208. Uh, JSN, man, I, and maybe I should apologize to Geno Smith because I was way too low on Geno, mm. man. He's uh, He is feeding JSN. Now, now, there's a lot of advanced analytics that I really like about JSN so far in 2024. And his rookie campaign was fine, man. It was a little disappointing. Uh, I, I Sorry, I don't even want to call it disappointing. It was just consensus was disappointed they wanted to see more but again it reminds me of the Roma Dunze situation what do you expect when you have Tyler Lockett and DK comfortably ahead of you you know what do you what do you expect from Rome when you have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen in front of you back to JSN man he is eighth in total route wins he is top 15 in route win rate so with the efficiencies there uh you know 12th in targets i mean he has two games this year casey where he has over 12 12 targets or more uh first in the nfl in slot snaps at 188 that is a 77.7 percent rate really really good stuff there and third in overall routes run with 161 so we are seeing him be on the field at, at, a, at a high rate he, he's sixth in receptions. I mean, 
I know I called Zay a potential uh, PPR machine. I mean, JSN's kind of been that so far at the start of 2024, man. Mm. He's getting better. He's already taken a leap forward from 2023. I'm just excited to see JSN play every Sunday. Yeah, we, we saw the one huge blow up game from him, uh, them attacking downfield a little with him a little bit more. Targets are are coming hot and heavy with him. And this the, as this offense, this new offense that they've got with Brian Grub, Grubbs uh, moves forward. Oh. Gino was saying, hey, I'm, we're, I've seen plays that I've never even seen before schemes. I haven't even seen before with this. So this is a really exciting offense. Shout out to Kalen DeBoer and the whole staff from Washington offensively. Then. We, we, we were talking about this offseason, how sorry about for everybody who hates Alabama, but they're about to come in and be just fine because DeBoer's a beast. Uh, and, you know, Grubbs is, uh, Grubbs, Grubbs, uh, is from that staff, was with Penix, uh, and, and I think really doing wonders for Geno Smith. And I don't even think we've seen, you know, this thing go where it's going to go. Uh, and JSN being a big part of that. Lockett's not going to be around for a terrible amount longer, and we're already seeing Tyler Lockett or uh, JSN be heavily involved in this offense and how productive he can be uh, when given the opportunity. So I, I love it. JSN's going to be flying up this list uh, in no time. At 209, I'm going Lad McConkey. Got to. That's been my guy all offseason, crushing all the analytical metrics. People are loving him. We're just, we just need a little – we need a healthy Justin Herbert out there uh, for the back half of this season. And we, I think we could see some huge stuff from Ladd. Looks super effective out there. Looks super efficient out there. Great with the ball in his hands. Really tough to guard. And even though it's not uh, um, amounting to huge fantasy success, like I said, all of the analytical uh, guys who who really dissect those predictive numbers, Ladd's crushing. We went through it last week of stats you need to know. He's, he's near the top of all of those numbers that all the guys like. Um, and we'll be... Uh, back with one of those shows next week. So be sure to like, subscribe, uh, comment below what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, but we'll be back with more stats you need to know uh, with across the league of diving into those that I've been mentioning all uh, draft long here. And we'll dive into those numbers and see who's where. But uh, it's a good good piece of the puzzle there. So Lad, of course, my guy, love him. Uh, giving him a shout out here, 209. All right, so we have three picks remaining as we wrap up this draft. I'm on the clock with 210. I'm going to take Jonathan Brooks here. Um, I think at, at this point, man, I want to prioritize the running back position. Uh, you could say position scarcity. You could say uh, wh whatever narrative you want to point out. I think Jonathan Brooks is probably a decent value here. Now, I don't feel quite as comfortable with this pick as some of my you know previous picks. I think that you know Brooks, six foot two sixteen, he was clearly an investment for the Carolina Panthers. They knew what they were getting into when they they prioritized him in the second round. He was the first running back off the board. They were well aware that he was going to take time to uh, you know just get on the field, get healthy, and really you know play a vital role for this offense. They knew it was going to be a, a really long period of time prior to that day coming now i think he's at this point very close to getting activated off the pup list we're going to see jonathan brooks you know hopefully just just really have a big impact on this team sooner rather than later but i do want to point out man chuba has looked really good really yeah. good and if there's one line i can leave you with with jonathan brooks is that i am absolutely significantly more bullish on jonathan brooks in dynasty rather than redraft yeah no i i love it man and and it was certainly it was an investment for you as a dynasty owner and an investment for uh carolina you're seeing the fruits of what carolina was trying to do with the switch at quarterback here and chuba being one of the biggest beneficiaries of that looking like a stud out there so you gotta like what potential jonathan brooks has here so i love the pick it's a good value uh if not injured probably higher on this list so uh, I'm going to go 211. I'm going to get my man Tank Dell, probably one of the easier buy lows right now for me, uh, not performing, injured. Uh, but we've seen him come out here as a rookie and average over 18 points per game. Uh, it's in there. He's going to be a part of big part of this offense moving forward. Nico's awesome, and they brought in Stefan Diggs. How long does that last? We don't know. Uh, but Tank Dell's, Tank Dell's going to be just fine. I didn't want to leave him out of this. Like I said in the beginning, we're trying to stuff so many guys into these last three picks. It's it's really hard to do, but I didn't want to leave my guy Tank Dell off this list. Maybe I could have uh, sprung for Xavier Worthy here, uh, but I'm going with Tank Dell. 
I, I you know, I, I've seen him be able to operate and get open at a very high level and do some of the same stuff that Xavier Worthy can do. Obviously, both tied to a really good situation, really good quarterback. Maybe should have went Worthy here, but I went Tank Dell. To tell you the truth, like I, I could get on board with that. I, I completely understand. And Worthy was very, very close to being taken by, by myself as well here. But I ended up pivoting to Jordan Addison with the final pick, the 212. I mean, Addison was just way too good as a rookie, man. A top 23 wide receiver right out of the gate with backup quarterbacks for the majority of the season. This season, I know a very, very different story, Casey, where he loses his quarterback again, dealing with another backup quarterback right out of the gate, even though Sam Darnold's looked fantastic. Uh, but Jordan Addison goes down week one, banged up, comes back week four. And what does he do, man? He commands nine opportunities. He had per PFF 100% separation percentage on uh, j- just throughout the entire game that, you know, that was th- again, over the nine opportunities, he produced separation on all of them. And I just, I thought that was so impressive, man. He had the long touchdown, a really nasty double move. He looked spry. Look, I, I, I think Addison is just a legitimately good NFL player. And I think he's being slept on a little too much. So to, to get him here at the two twelve, sign me up, man, sign me up. I love it. I could have taken him at the two eleven. Just a great number two out there. Sammy D looks like the real deal. Mm-hmm. So I, I I love that. And then worst case scenario, you got JJ coming in right behind him. You love the the OC or the, the head coach and the scheme that they're running. The DC is really good. Everything in Minnesota pointing straight up. So I love that. Let's give a couple shout outs here to guys who didn't quite make the draft. I'll do some 23 guys. Josh Downs, I thought, deserves a little love. Uh, Wicks deserves a little love. I want to give Q... Quentin Johnston, a little bit of love for <laughs> yeah. not being dead, dead, you know, yeah. I fucking love it. Um, Charbs being behind Kenny Walker. Look, you know, when he got his opportunity, good. And then I think Chase Brown, Ch- Chase Brown, you know, climbing his way yeah. I- into more and more opportunity. You got some 2024 guys you want to give a little love to? Yeah, for 2024, man. I mean, uh, Casey, we didn't even get to talk about Braylon Allen, man. I wanted mm. to, sque- I wanted to squeeze him in, him in there. In there. I, I wanted to, but I, I couldn't draft him at the 212. I, I just, it's, it's truly just Brees Hall. That is the only thing that's separating me from. Sure. Uh, hell, I would have drafted him at the 101. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> but he'd have uh, been a uh, first rounder probably if he, if he was on the team where he could get the reps. Yeah, and and between him man, and obviously other guys that come to mind, whether it's uh, you know Michael Penix Jr. from 2024, whether it's even Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy. Obviously, this is a super flex draft, so we have to mm-hmm. prioritize quarterbacks. But you know, a few receivers that you know, look, man, Xavier Leggett, he just he just had double digit targets. There we he go. Set, he set career highs in yards, targets, receptions, snap percentage. Everything across the board this past week, uh, Andy Dalton peppered him. And you could say maybe it was a little game script because Deontay, obviously, they had ab- abandoned the run. Deontay got 13 targets. Uh, they they just they were pass happy. Uh, but yeah, man, whether it was him, even Bucky Irving, man, Trent, his stock is trending up heavily. Heck yeah. You got, um, man, shout out to uh, shout out to the GOAT, Ricky Pearsall. Mm. I, I would love to see him start producing, man. I, I you know, couldn't well, fit never, him we've in. Never here, seen but... you and Ricky Pearsall in the same <laughs> yeah, room, so that, that is factual. But uh, and last guy I want to give a quick shout out to is uh, Keon Coleman, man. I I think that he's been a little bit better than I was anticipating so far, but uh, couldn't 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 quite fit him top two rounds. Yeah. Yeah, AD Mitchell hasn't really has oppor- has been open, got an opportunity, just hasn't converted on some of it, whether it was his fault or Richardson's fault on some of those. Jalen Polk, we mentioned in this as a as a nice buy low. I loved you getting a Leggett. Uh Trey Benson starting to get a little run. Of course, worthy. I mean, we talked about him all through those last mm-hmm. picks, so don't want to forget about him. But so, you know, and, and Jalen Wright hasn't really gotten the opportunity to do anything, but he's he could be a lot of fun. So so much good stuff going on in the new uh last two draft class and really the last three draft class we've been really spoiled uh and now we're 2025 the running backs look like uh we're gonna get some some pretty good ones uh, and the the top couple of receivers look awesome as well so um doesn't look like it's gonna be a terrible disappointment in 25 so super exciting austin always the best uh be sure to go check him out on the twitters at austin abbott ff two b's two t's and two f's uh you won't be disappointed there got all sorts of good facts figures and information for you if you're not following it i'm not really sure why not uh be sure to like subscribe comment below 
Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. It was a fun Friday, little mock exercise. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know what you think in the comments, who who you guys would have had in there, who, who's completely wrong, who's an idiot. Hit us up with that. We'll appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace.